it's difficult for us to reflect just the the sheer magnitude of this. It looks like a James Bond movie, like who would be at this like gala event that they that he needs to protect or something. And they were so frustrated that they decided, well, we're just going to create our own boutique coin. Like we're going to we're going to do our own thing. And then finally, they're just like, well, let's just use Casper. I would like to get an update on where we're at with KRC, Casplex, and then the big crescendo hard fork. Casplex is a protocol to let you make tokens on Caspa. Tether would be the more likely household name that we, we would be able to get going first. Just saw Kraken uh, has, has announced on their listing page that they're gonna, uh, they're looking towards uh, listing Caspa. It's gonna be on an AMA with Binance.com uh, for their mining pool. So that's that's exciting uh, that they're, they're uh, engaging with Caspa and, and and broadcasting to their community about Caspa and mining. Caspa community, do I have an absolute treat for you? Today I am joined with three legends from the Caspa project. We're gonna talk about some of the important things happening in the ecosystem. We're gonna talk about the Caspa Industrial Initiative. We're gonna talk about Rusty Caspa, and we're also going to talk about some potential insider info, some alpha to give to you guys. And so today I'm joined with the three legends we have Dr. Shy joining us. We have Wolfie and, of course, the man himself, the creator of the Casper logo you all kind of love, Rue Barbarian, gentlemen. You know, I am so thankful because this was such short notice, and you guys, no questions asked, said, let's jump on it. Let's do a video for the community. I appreciate you guys, and I'm sure the people watching appreciate you as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Shy, I want to start with you first. Um, there's a lot of talk about the Caspa Industrial Initiative, right? And for the people watching, I'm sure people know exactly what it is, but can you give us a little more insight as far as where we are? What kind of adoption could we be seeing? And is there anything in the works behind the scenes? I actually, I don't have much more information than uh, what you already know. Uh, I'm involved in the in conversations behind the scene. Uh, I think it's less about uh, some uh, explicit did bit of information, but more like I think uh, it's difficult for us to reflect just the the sheer magnitude of this. I think even people read through it and they heard the uh, Rory's stellar cameo on the on the space uh, a few weeks ago. Um, but uh, I think the the like the alpha here, the the thing that's yet to be recognized is just the sheer magnitude of it, the the pedigree of the people involved and the how how proficient they are and how much history they have with moving things around and uh, and making things happen. Now, I think some people maybe missed this bit of information, but Rory told me, um, like, my first, uh, my first acquaintance with Rory and uh, the guys was in Dublin. I, I gave a keynote in, the, in a conference to arrange, actually it was arranged by the IOTA guys. Mm. Um, and yeah, so they asked me to come and give a keynote. It was a general, uh, a general uh, workshop about uh, DAGs and block DAGs in uh, in uh, Trinity College. And uh, 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 Rory O'Neill, I didn't know him at the time, but he came to the lecture. And after the lecture, he talked to me, and uh, uh, we went to get lunch. He told me he had all these ideas. Um, I didn't really know what this was about, but he seemed like a, a nice. Uh, and serious fellow, so I joined him, and then uh, he started telling me about the industry and what they're doing, and I s he started uh, showing me white papers and uh, listing names and showing me the things he's involved in, and I realized, okay, this is kind of big, and uh, mostly what's big about it is this, these are players that are from outside crypto. Oh. So uh, there's a lot of potential to create new adoption here. And like the energy sector is a very interesting sector, and they have connections with other sectors. And finally, suddenly, it all made sense. After all, what is the problem here? We have tons of energy, of green energy that people want to trade in, and there isn't a real platform for that. The way people do it usually is to find direct connections and do it like peer to peer, and you need a platform because otherwise it's very complicated. You don't, you can't expect any any person who generates energy to find a client. It makes everything so much less efficient, and energy is literally getting wasted because of that. 
Uh, and the problem is that if you want to create this uh, um, trading platform, you don't want it to be controlled by anyone who could coerce it in any way. So uh, it's, it makes a lot of sense not even to have it in any currency of any country, but to attach it to crypto. And it, uh, when I first heard it, I was like, wow, uh, how come this wasn't obvious to me? And apparently they already tried this. And this is the really cool part. They created smart meters and that uh, energy, the energy that uh, people who create energy, like farmers with solar, pa- so- solar panels or whatever, the energy goes through the meter and the meter can uh, read how much energy it was and it knows the sources of the energy and all sorts of properties you would like to track. The, the meter, it sees how much energy you produce and it issues coins for you that could be used for energy trading. It's incredible stuff. They already had this deployed for testing. They, they deployed it all around uh, Dublin and did like uh, simulations of, uh, of uh, cross country trading. And uh, this was back in 2016, apparently. And the one issue they kept, ran, kept running into was the throughput. And the reaction speed also, to a lesser extent, because it's not something that has to be as fast as buying copy. If you know, uh, trading energy can't, can take a while, even if you have a very fast way to pay, because there is bureaucracy around it. But right. the throughput was a really, really huge problem. And that's where Caspa came in. And it's like, it's amazing. It's a perfect fit. They already made everything they need except the currency itself. And they had to shelf the entire thing because there wasn't any any coin that was up to the job. And they are very keen on proof of work because they believe, like I believe, that proof of stake couldn't really be central uh, decentralized. And so, so, are you saying, Shai, are you saying that Caspa is 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 up, you know, up to the ready to pick up that call? Are they? Yeah, the uh, Rory already said it. I think I'm just I'm pointing out. The like uh, the the stuff I think people should notice the most, which excited me the most, because Rory gave this stellar introduction, but he unloaded a lot of information in a very short time. So I just wanted to highlight this uh, one thing, uh, these few things. Um, uh, I think uh, this is uh, kind of amazing because it shows what we've been saying all along that we need to draw adoption from outside by showing that we made something that is actually usable. Um, so that's one thing about KAI. Uh, ah, the name KAI didn't even exist at the time, but uh, these guys work fast. They work extremely fast. It's it, the short amount of time from when it was like just an idea over lunch to having a website and a team and a board. Um, these are people who know how to work and how to to get stuff done. And I think this is like the biggest news here. Uh, nothing uh, mm-hmm. explicit, but just the fact that people of this magnitude are involved should uh, make everyone who who, who supports Casper very happy. Yeah. I support Casper and I'm very happy. Uh, Wolfie, mm-hmm. I want to, I want to kind of take this another direction. What, what, why is, why is KII so important to adoption and, you know, the success of, of Casper moving forward? Sure. So um, I've had an analogy, um, the analogy with her here. So I've had one about like comparing Caspa uh, to like a rock band and then like some of the token projects that are pre-contrived by corporations that come out and like the first day they're on Coinbase or Binance, you know, that's like a boy band, you know, they know the name of the band and they have all the songs written ready before they even know who's in the band, you know. So uh, I, I tweeted yesterday, I was... Um, I've been participating in Caspa for a thousand days. That was yesterday. So, uh, starting from the very beginning, uh, we've we've worked our way up the ladder on Coin Market Cap and hash rate and adoption and through all the mining platforms up to ASICs and everything, and up the exchanges to to mid top tier so far, and um, and that's without a push. That's all community driven. So it's very refreshing to have these these you know monsters of rock, these huge energy people behind us now. Uh, contributing and helping to push the ecosystem and um, really, really using their connections and, and their reach to, to, to help propel us to our fair 
uh, and rightful position based on our technology, you know, the, the superior technology. Um, if you look at, uh, like, like to get a grip of, on what we're talking about, this, this reminds me, this list, if you go, uh, to Google and you search, uh, DII desert energy, you'll see the, uh, the, the group that these people come from. And, um, if you go to advisory board and you scroll through to me, it's almost unbelievable. It looks like something you would see in a James Bond movie. Like, you know, there's a party of these, these uh, you know, you know, these, these global energy people and James Bond has to go and find the guy that's gonna, you know, set off a nerve gas bomb in there or something. It's, it's the titles of the people in this board are it's almost like made up like fictional, but it's not, you know, and, uh, they're interested in, uh, um, a lot of things they, like I was mentioning, they want to create a, you know, a token an energy token to trade, um, energy credits, and they want it to be censorship resistant, which makes perfect sense because these guys are located all over the place. They're in China, they're in Mongolia, they're in, um, the MENA, you know, Middle East and North African regions, and also, uh, a lot of European players in here. So they have all these energy credits and they generate extra or they need to you know get some back maybe and they have to trade uh i think roy said it updates every uh it's them that's the guys right there yeah i mean look at that dude it looks like a james bond movie like who would be at this like gala event that they that he needs to protect or something hmm. um so so <laughs> these guys all need to trade credits and it updates like on, i think on a 15 minute basis you know where mm-hmm. they have to settle books for like moving energy uh from grid to grid or how, i have no idea exactly how it works but you know, these people, some of these people are already in KII, CASPA Industrial Initiative, you know. So uh, it's super exciting. And uh, I just wanted to tell one other little statement. Rory, the uh, the kind of the boss guy of it, told me, he's uh, he said, so CASPA Industrial Initiative is creating a study using data of all known power projects from the Desert Initiative partner network that are f- fully permitted but stalled due to grid connection issues or other local market issues and will encourage the development of those power projects for mining. So uh, in the desert, there's uh, just things that are like almost done that can create power. And probably some of them are from waste or from solar. I'm not sure, but it's not like they're just looking to like dig oil out of the ground and burn it and pollute the environment to make power. They're they're This is like smart guy power, you know? And um, it's an interesting angle for miners. He go, goes on to say, since DII has uh, uh, reach, he, they have the reach to partner with miners for development of these opportunities that go from Mongolia and China to MENA and also Europe. So that's super exciting as well. I mean, I got the I got the partner list here. This thing is pretty massive, right? Mm-hmm. Associated partners, lead partners, strategic partners. So this isn't uh, any run-of-the-mill energy company. Mm-hmm. Um Chad, do you want to chime in here? Uh, any any thoughts on your end? Yeah, yeah, I've been super impressed with the. I mean, the guys have talked about the pedigree of of the people that are involved, and they're not just new out of the gate. I mean, these guys have been working on the possibilities of of using you know some sort of new technology to make energy trading better, to make cross border payments better, to do all this. They've been working on this for years. Uh, listening to Rory on that uh, on that channel. Uh, and there's a clip on our YouTube channel. Uh, you got to listen to it. Um, they created rubrics and they studied and they, they were looking for the magic, you know, token. And they were so frustrated that they decided, well, we're just going to create our own boutique coin. Like we're going to, we're going to do our own thing. And then finally they're just like, well, let's just use Casper. And because it, it meets all their boxes. So when you do a rubric, you know, you're trying to figure out what, what becomes the perfect scenario for the solution that needs to be solved. And they're just like, let's just use Caspa. So that alone was like, so you have the, you have the skills, you have the history, you have the experience, you have the connections, you have the study. So they've done the research and they've chosen Caspa. So it's not just a whim. They're like, Oh, Caspa is cool. We like, we like the project. We like the people. No, they've been they've been researching for years before even Casper was alive, and then when when Casper came to be, and they've been kind of in the secret space for a year before looking at Casper, they realized it checks all the boxes. So this is an epic. This is like I mean, Casper alone is epic, but when you meet it up with uh, real world uh, use. It's incredible. And I love, I love the scenario of, br- of bridging the startup world, the entrepreneurship world, uh, the real world of solving problems, come up with the great products and applications 
with blockchain. And that's what KI is helping us do. Man, uh, if you're watching this and, and that doesn't excite you as a CASPA community member, uh, I don't know what will. May well, actually, maybe this will. I want to, I would like to get an update on where we're at with KRC, Casplex, and then the big crescendo hard fork, which will take CASPA from one to 10 blocks per second. Uh, just as kind of a reference point here, uh, Bitcoin needs 10 minutes to confirm one block. Caspa is getting ready to do confirm 10 blocks in one second, 10 blocks in one second. So um, I guess I'll go to you first, Shai, because you know, I know you've been working with the Casplex team. Um, and, you know, from what I've seen on X and Twitter, you've been extremely helpful. Uh, V1 rolled out. There were some things you guys wanted to improve on. And you've, right, correct me if I'm wrong, been kind of working with the team. Where are we at with KRC? Uh, and uh, can you speak a little bit about Crescendo and, and why that's so important? Mm, okay, those are two completely separate things. Mm, KRC, well, first of all, I must clarify that I wasn't uh, working consistently with the KRC team. I've been uh, um, following the work. Uh, I've been uh, participating in some conversations and some uh, discussions, uh, um, more of a consultancy thing, unofficially, but uh, nothing consistent. I haven't been in touch with them for weeks. Um, uh, I kind of wanted to act as one of the people who connect between like because after what we've seen in the launch we realized that there are stuff that need to be prepared on several fronts not it's not just casplex responsibility or uh, um the wallet's responsibility because there are also things to do from the rusty casper side we needed to implement a uh, um, repost by fee and the uh, um and fee estimation, and then integrate them with the wallets. Um, I really support Casplex's decision to not provide any um, hard launch dates before we see finalization of the stuff that is out of their hands, which is essentially the APIs that were um, implemented for uh, fees by the Rusty Caspa team and their integration into wallets, and especially the um, Caswell wallet. I think there was another wallet that also decided to start supporting Kelsey. I'm not sure. Mm, but that's the way I see it. I think uh, um, going for a launch as uh, ASAP is not, not a good idea, and I really support uh, taking a step back and taking a breather and uh, doing some uh, R&R. And um, and letting other people have time to work and uh, see how they do stuff. Now, I don't think I'm even uh, up to date on the latest updates from Casplex. I'm not sure where the launch is standing, but uh, on the general uh, view of things, the way I see it, things are progressing really well, and there is mm -hmm. cooperation uh, of all the um, the parties that should be communicating about doing this as smoothly and nicely as possible. And I'm, uh, I really uh, appreciate uh, that it uh, forced us to go and handle uh, fee, fee market stuff because uh, it's been a bit overdue. And so this is like a consequence of the failed lunch that is good for Casper, in my opinion. Uh, I don't consider it a fair lunch. Uh, um, sorry, a failed lunch, by the way. I hear some people say that the launch failed. I don't think so. A better is a better. Uh, we knew it could uh, it could uh, crash. Um, and the important thing is that we got a lot of meaningful data. And we got a very good um, view of uh, the magnitude of the, the operation. And <laughs> we've seen that, uh, in principle, all of the problems that we've witnessed are completely solvable. No funds were lost, and, and everything went very good. I think even though it did crash, it was just a first attempt, and it was uh, declared as a beta. So uh, I think things are progressing very nicely, and uh, there were some slight hiccups, but on the overall, hiccups are part of the process. Uh, so I, I'm hopeful that the next launch would be nice and smooth, 
and we will be more prepared than the last time, which is kind of the point of doing a beta launch. Right. And now, I, regarding I Crescendo... Yeah. Hmm, sorry? No, please. I was going to say, and as it should be. Mm. So, Crescendo is the name we gave to the, to the uh, upcoming hard fork. Now, the main purpose of this hard fork is the increasing the block throughput. Mm, but I think... Uh, I think uh, it should, we should clarify what this entails because increasing the block throughput is not like you change uh, somewhere in the code from 1 to 10 and then you let it run. Um, it's not also just about optimizing things and making things efficient. There were um, complete uh, parts of the code that had to be completely redesigned and we had to come up with uh, interesting solutions. Um, for example, uh, we want uh, to do difficulty adjustment. And if you increase the block rate 10 times, then you have um, in a difficulty window, its length is measured in hours. So it becomes, becomes 10 times longer and you have to do it 10 times more, like 10 times a second instead of once a second. So we came up with an idea to not to use the entire, um, the entire difficulty window, but uh, we came up with a good way to sample blocks, for example. Uh, so we want to. So this is one of the changes that are absolutely essential to even think about high block rates, um, and many other such changes are included, um, like uh, refactoring the mempool, and uh, uh, you know all the optimizations that were done for uh, on the fly header pruning. It, they were listed along the way. Though um, we are also um, using this to introduce some other changes that require a hard fork but are much simpler, like uh, uh, Keep9, that the solution for state bloat and dust attacks, uh, Keep6, the cryptographic receipts, which will uh, uh, allow uh, we, it will actually simplify greatly simplify KRC, the design of the KRC indexer, but it's not. Uh, the only reason we do it is just uh, like it's an example. Uh, in in general, it would, it's very useful. Uh, the cryptographic receipts are like um, this thing that you can compute um, um, about a transaction while it's not pruned yet, like when it's relatively new. And then you could use it to prove the transaction was accepted indefinitely. So um, you could post a transaction today and, and get computer receipt. And in a year or two years or five years or 10 years or whenever, any Casper node could validate this proof that the receipt was uh, is of a, a transaction that was actually accepted and uh, cryptographically validated. So um, for, for uh, example, for Casplex, this is very useful because they have to keep the data of all the... Um, all the KRC related transactions and uh, enough data to prove that they were actually accepted. So they essentially have to run an archival node at this point. So um, replacing this with uh, with cryptographic receipts will make everything much, much more lighter. And um, so that's, that's about it. Uh, Crescendo is a huge hard fork. It's the first major update yeah. since launch, actually. I mean, there were some things that were technically hard faults, but they were like uh, very um, uh, uh, chirurgical solutions to very specific problems. And the, well, we only did hard faults because we had to, to fix some pressing problems. But this is like the first major update to the protocol. And it's going to change a lot of things, simplify a lot of things. And the main thing is the 10 VPS and all the utilities you need around 10 VPS. But as I said, it's going to include uh, a little bit of some uh, other features that require a hard fork, but are uh, much easier and simpler. Uh, some of them are complicated on their own, but uh, like the magnitude of the complexity of 10 VPS is, is staggering. So next, next to this, there are definitely the satellite uh, updates. That's amazing, man. Uh, I, I find it hard to believe that once that goes live and we have, you know, the token standard live and everything's great. You know, we talk about technology in the space. 
I don't know. Point me to another one. Uh, Chad, I, I want to I wanna ask you, uh, any thoughts on what Shai kind of said and, you know, whether it's with, you know, Casplex or the Crescendo? Yeah, I think it's been great to see, and I'm excited about what's coming. I've heard some updates. I know from all the players for the KRC20, uh, from the wallets to Casplex themselves, and what's going on with the update with... Um, with the rusty caspa all the players all the platforms all the devs are, are are working and the things that needed to be improved have been you know boxes have been checked and the the work's being done so i think you know no no dates but overall and similar to how caspa has been been implemented and developed over the the years it's done right and it, and it's done when it's done so um, the cool thing is all the projects are still on board and very excited and they're still, you know, posting and, and excited about when things go live for good. So overall, the beta was a success and uh, we'll, we'll see what, what comes next. Uh, Wolfie, is there like a, just a list of people that are waiting, knocking at the door to, to launch projects, steps, solutions, whatever it is, you know, once everything's in place? Sure. Yeah. So as for uh, the KRC20, the Casplex, that's uh, certainly, uh, you know, factual that uh, there, there's uh, at least a couple dozen meme coins that want to list. Um, there's various stables and, and entities that want to try to uh, issue stables on, on Casplex as, as a token. And uh, just for the for viewers that aren't exactly aware what, what this enables uh, right now, as as Caspa stands, uh, it's kind of a one trick pony. It does this trick really well, but it lets you just send coins from one address to another. So the KRC20 uh, is is a token standard uh, based on inscriptions. Um, and that's what Casplex is a protocol to let you make tokens on Caspa. Um, so, and, and the beta, you guys, it was not a failure, you guys, uh, something really important to point out here is that, um, the beta. So if you think of the Caspa, you know, the Casplex is not a Caspa core product. That's a separate entity. Right. right. But you know, the Caspa core guys that picture them like guys in the gym, like benching a lot and doing lots of, of strength training with weights. Right. So they're focused on that one area. But then you send like a, you know, a gym only guy like that. You send them to yoga or you, you sit, put them to CrossFit or doing some stair training. You know, they, they might be like, wow, you know, I, I didn't realize those those muscles and the, that those parts of my body weren't, you know, w you know, weren't even awake. You know, so uh, as Shai was mentioning, like the the uh, checking the fee, you know, the RBF fees thing and, and some some subtle things, some subtle tune ups to the uh, the core software were pointed out by by the beta for the Casplex. So so uh, it got it got um, the Caspa core product got uh, refined and is being perfected even even better um, because of that. And, um, you know, even the uh, the uh, KII people, uh, I'm sure they'll be interested there. They, they will consider whether they uh, would want to launch anything on the KRC 20 or they may choose to uh, wait for some some projects or all projects until the actual smart contract uh, integration. So uh, one or the other or both. But uh, yeah, I'm sure those guys will be looking into the possibility of using the uh, Casplex protocol as well. And and Wolfie or, or Chad, if you want to hop in here too, um, you know, this has been a question I've seen a lot of in forums, but you know, once once the token standard is live, right? We talk about DApps and meme coins. Are there any plans to bring in one of the the, the one of the two big stablecoin issuers, being Tether and Circle, uh, and having a a KRC KUSDT or KUSDC uh, stablecoin in the ecosystem at some point? Are those talks being had? Is that something you guys are leaving up to the community? What what are the thoughts? So it's been talked it's about not, USD, oh. USDK. USDK. <laughs> yeah. So for, as for tether or circles, probably a little more difficult. They're, they're, uh, I think they're U S based and, um, they're, they're a serious, serious, uh, U S entity with all the compliance and all that stuff. But, uh, tether would be the more likely household name that we, we would be able to get going first. Um, there's definitely, uh, people that are speaking with them. Um, not me directly, but, um, there, there's a few ways to go about it. There's like a formal uh, native, you know, like uh, way of doing it. And then I think um, there's if, you know, you, there's some type of bridge mechanism where you could kind of, kind of, um, you know, like 
uh, shoehorn your way into having them appear, uh, even if if you didn't have a direct contact with Tether uh, right off the bat. So I think there's the uh, the the starter kit way that Tether could appear on Caspa, and then there's also the uh, you know the the um, partnership or well partnership's not a great word, but you know what I mean. You know yeah. the the mutually, collaboration, uh, yeah, collaboration way to to get it done. So awesome. hopefully we'll see at least one of those happen. Yeah, that would be exciting. Uh, and I'll kind of end it at this. Gentlemen, I will leave the floor to you. Any uh, inside scoop, any juicy uh, juicy information you can give me and, of course, the people watching? I think, uh, you know, we, we know that, uh, you know, we just saw Kraken uh, has, has announced on their listing page that they're going to, uh, they're looking towards uh, listing Caspa. So that's super exciting. Um, and then, uh, you know, tomorrow we're going to be on an AMA with Binance, uh, dot com for their mining pool. So that's, that's exciting, uh, that they're, they're, uh, engaging with Caspa and, and, and broadcasting to their community about Caspa and mining. Um, so that's exciting, uh, to, to have them even recognize us, uh, and put us on their platform. That's super cool. And then, um, Looking towards September in a general way, you know, if the money printer turns on, maybe like the whole market will start waking up and greening up and having some fun. If not September, then October, right? Uh, we know for sure that uh, at some point the money printer will get turned back on. Chad, mm -hmm. any uh, any inside scoop you can give us? here? Yeah, nothing that's top secret, but we're continuing on with the Caspa World Tour. Uh, with uh, events happening um, coming up in Singapore with the uh, token 2024, uh, the event with the Kai group in Dublin, the end of September, uh, so September as well, and then prepping for the uh, conference in Australia. And there's also some uh, other events that are being peppered throughout um, Europe with uh, some of our ambassadors from France and Poland and Germany. So keep up to date with the socials to find out where you know, CASPA is coming, you know, <laughs> coming to a conference near you. Um, so it's continuing on. We'll, no, we'll be uh, Singapore. Singapore, yeah. Don't the, forget Singapore. Token, oh, token 2024. Yeah. So that's coming up as well. So check it out. And if you're in the, in the area, 2020, 20, what? 2049, token 2049, yeah. Singapore. 2049, that's what I mean, yeah. But it is in 2024, so he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Shy, I know you. I know you're sitting on some information there, Shy. I know it. What you got for me, bro? Sorry, I don't have any alpha for you other than the crescendo, and oh, and and the, I'm a, I, I've had a huge progression with the, with the posts that are going to become a book, and I just uh, I I'm gonna post a bulk of posts soon, so people who want some educational, technical Casper uh, content. They're going to have more than they bargained for, uh, hopefully in the next week or two. So this is my personal alpha. Not too exciting, but uh, things are progressing. And I'm in a, a prod productive writing period. So uh, uh, hopefully um, people will enjoy this content. Amazing. Uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you again for your time. I really appreciate you guys. And, and uh, those of you watching, if you appreciate us bringing these three amazing guests on the show to give you a cast up, they make sure to give us a like and comment. What was your favorite part of today's conversation? What are you looking forward to the most? Thank you so much. And we'll see you all next time. Yay, right on. Thanks, man. Care, Always guys. fun being on. Take care. Thanks a lot.